Well, hello everyone and welcome back. It's the Summit 3 and we are in the North American Qualifier in what we are calling Phase Number 1. Numero Uno. We got eight teams that we have invited to duke it on out and we got two spots open to make it into Phase Number 2 to face another six teams. More established teams, teams that have been together maybe a bit longer or have more mm. credit, more oomph, more pizzazz behind them. But yeah, a bit longer in NA. That's not saying much though, Coddle Guy. It's a crazy shuffle out there. Yeah, it's, it's a shuffle every day. Every day I learn something new about NA and it's all different and it's all changed and that doesn't exclude today. Our first <laughs> matchup, we got Root Gaming taking on Pain Gaming. It's a battle of the gaming. Mm -hmm. But this isn't the same route that we used to know. Like, I remember back in Summit 2 Qualifier at this very desk when we were all getting all hyped behind Leviathan. Tubby the Fat. Tubby the Fat Root yeah. Game with his timber saw. That uh -huh. was so badass. And all that ogre play. Yeah, I remember that. That was them. And they had, like, a good thing going for them, a good story. But things have changed. It's now yeah. Thundercats that have become Root Gaming here. So let's just go ahead, and without further ado, we'll hop into the freaking draft here. There yeah. We go. I mean, let's take a look. Paint Gaming, at least they've been semi-stable. Names you'll recognize over yeah. there. Root, a couple of faces I recognize, but not in tandem with one another. So we'll see how they square up. Monkey's forever. Uh, he's a, a pretty big streamer. He slapped me around once in a sub war because... Ashley cheated and brought him in. He's not a sub, but still he came yeah, in, played Storm Spirit, weapon. slapped me down. So uh, I've got a little personal history with him, I suppose. But I don't even know who the favorite is coming in here, Dakota. It's hard to say, seeing this Root Gaming lineup. To be honest with you, I think a good value bet would be going for Root Gaming. Because I think just as it is, and the odds coming into this matchup is about 60-40 in favor of Pain Gaming. A lot of people see these two names and they're probably like, oh, Pain Gaming. I know that name. They've played around quite a bit. Root Gaming, I've never really seen them do anything big, but Pain Gaming I have, and I feel like that's where the bets really are, but mm -hmm. Root Gaming, when they were the Thundercat squad just before they were taken in by Root, was a pretty good squad. I mean, they had Fluff also ringing in for them for quite a while. They've been trying to test the waters as far as supports go. Right now, they have Crit standing in, and Crit, we know, has been around the block on a lot of these teams. You already yeah. talk about Monkeys Forever. Spirit is fun from the other Thundercats team is what he confirmed it as has been their position for and their drafter for quite a while okay. and Guanzo I'd have to say is probably one of the most talented players on this team in the mm -hmm. offlane position he has a nasty good bat rider and a really good clockwork something yeah, to check I'm out for trying to remember him. what team I knew him from was he on an old iteration of Pain Gaming perhaps or was he probably on... like Osiris Gaming yeah. maybe, like, something like that like there, there's a lot of teams out there that he was the standout through. player on whichever team it was either yeah, Icarus exactly. or Osiris or something like that yeah. anyhow let's talk about these heroes a little bit Pain Gaming they they ban out Lion and the Troll uh, Root Gaming. They take out Earthshaker as well as the Slark. Open ups for Avenge Shadow Fiend. First pick duo here for Pain Gaming. A little bit of minus armor out on the field. And, well, Root, they grab the Bat Rider paired with the Skywrath Mage. They should just keep this minus armor going all the way through. Get like a bristle back in the off lane. Get that set up. <laughs> get another Dazzle as a support. Mm -hmm. um, what else could you Slardar. do? Position Slardar. Slardar. Yeah, exactly. Baby. That was There's it. your team right there. <laughs> All minus armor, huge physical with the spines. I like it. I did quills. see a two-team matchup not too long ago. It was definitely NIP versus someone, and it was like three minus mm -hmm. armor heroes per team. It was ridiculous. It was yep. Battle of the Squish. That was ES Portal the other day. Clockwork, man, he has risen in popularity. You talked about Guanzo playing him. He'll be banned out by Root Gaming, but we've even seen an ES Portal recently. Clockwork first picked, first banned a couple of games. He has definitely been, been on the rise. There's definitely a lot behind him and the Bat Rider uh, because that kind of sets the tempo of the game. You're trying to sneak in, you know, clever first picks like your sniper, but you don't want to let a clockwork be on the as an option for the other team while you're going for a sniper. You don't want to get a shadow fiend when they might have a sniper option. The first couple of picks in most of these drafts always seem very similar, but there is a lot of thought process behind them to make sure you can kind of set the stage for the rest of the draft and what you want to do and unfold. You're not going to see people pull out some crazy ass stuff right off the bat because then you're kind of throwing it all in there. No Medusa first pick or anything like that. They got to establish their foundation first. Like, a lot of times it's going to be your support with an off laner or maybe a mid laner if they get the appropriate band set up. In which this case, Pain Gaming, no sniper is going to be gone. They don't have to deal with the troll and they get their Shadow Fiend. So now it's as far as being able to establish good mid game, good team fight mm -hmm. so that their later game can really develop. Yeah, nice ban from Ten Pain Gaming on their third. Sniper, one of the better heroes to go up against Shadow Fiend mid. We've uh, become pretty back. familiar with that semi counter pick, at least for the laning stage. Now, Anti Mage, banned out by Root Gaming. They take a long while to think about it. Interesting choice. Not sure if that's a respect ban from Pain or maybe a sign that they might want to go with something like a Medusa. Um, I guess he's pretty good against their, their early kit here, but. 
a Medusa now banned out by Pain Gaming. So there you have it. Yeah, I, I don't think Pain Gaming want to really mess around at all. They have the appropriate band to use, and so I, I think they just kind of got the thing, same thing you were thinking about. But that leaves a chug out there, and we got to get a jug. So they grab up their their core, their late game, good potential, good pizzazz. Not a yeah. lot to say about it. It's yeah. more Roche potential. They're already on Dire's side. It just kind of synergizes well. It's very vanilla for how things feel right now, but yeah. you know, hope, hopefully we'll get some spice in there. He soon. works well with all the minus armor, of course, Five but he's not remain. quite as potent as he was. He had that series of micro nerfs where now he just is, he feels a little bit less strong than he was, especially all the mana costs. Now you really have to go for stats, limits his lane power, but if you have one of those setups where it's a 3-1-1 one, one on both sides, when you've got that safe lane, tri lane, he should be able to farm. No problem. Now Root, they strike back with the Storm Spirit, so now that anti-mage ban making a little more sense, all three of these heroes should have pretty beefy mana pools, and Storm among them. Pretty good pick against the Shadow Fiend as well. I'm curious to see if Pain Gaming want to see this Storm Spirit and be like, oh, I see it, I gotcha. And I was wagering maybe, the, and it's still a possible option to get the Doom as the direct counter, given they still probably need an offlane setup. Doom nowadays in the offlane is not the best thing ever, but if you really need to shut down a prominent core like Storm Spirit, sometimes you need to fall back on it. But they get their Disruptor instead. Another fantastic Silence hero, though it is his ultimate. You do have a way of locking down the Storm so he can't really ball out of control, you know, mm -hmm. minus the pun, of course. But he's not typically a big BKB kind of a hero. So if you're forced to get a BKB, Ten you're kind of doing something remaining. right. And Glimpse certainly can help when Storm's trying to ball away. You can quickly catch Five him and he'll just be right remaining. back in place. Yep. So, I mean, I'm always bigger on getting like a support silencer above a disruptor to kind of fill that void if they want to be able to really take it back to someone like Storm, but I suppose disruptor always has its home somewhere. Yeah, well, Root go with a fourth pick Razor here. I haven't seen Razor picked up too much in the EU games that I've been casting over the past few weeks, but still a great hero against the Shadow Fiend. Of course, you can uh, drain some of his damage as he gets a little bit bigger. Should have a pretty decent lane presence. A little bit of pushing power for Root gaming as well. Be excited to see how this works out and how they'll land it. I reckon it'll be He's Storm in the mid and Razor in the safe lane. But they've got a couple of options here. Bit of flexibility. Yeah, Razor's... Razor's Radiant unusual nowadays. Back. back in TI4, you wouldn't be able to make it past the first phase without Razor being banned or picked up or something like that. But nowadays, it just seems a bit interesting. It's not the whole face rush push kind of style of the, that Dota once was, but he definitely offers a lot of potential nowadays when you have man-fighting kind of heroes who want to get in your face, but they kind of have to second-guess themselves if they got a static link kind of in the mix. But here's going to be the Nyx fifth pick here. Even with Medusa still off the field, Nyx is back in this one as the off-lane grab. Yeah. Used to be all about it, all the rage back in the day, but Whoa, there he is in Undying. So things, we, I was saying things are a bit vanilla. This is, the, this is the chocolate sauce, all right? We this got the <laughs> little bit of the cherry, the nuts. <laughs> this is a whole whole chocolate sundae yeah. here. Now, Nyx Assassin, not that common of a pick these days. Great against the Bat Rider, though. We're all pretty familiar with what you can do with that spiky carapace. You pop it on, walk into the fire, bada boom, bada bing. You've got stun on the Bat Rider. Pretty easy setup for somebody to come in and make his life a little more difficult. The Undying, what a fun pick from Root Gaming. Mm. We see this hero every so often, great for his laning stage, notorious for super strength in those early, like levels one through six. Falls off a little bit in the mid game, but he can really be scary. Prepare Very interested to see how this pick works out. For Root Gaming, I think this puts them on a little bit of a clock here though, Dakota. You're not going to want to go late game against yeah. the Shadow Fiend Jug if you got an Undying on your team. Undying definitely can fall off at a point, but some teams have been experimenting and putting him into the lineup against nowadays you see a lot of heroes like your Axe and such that he can possibly thrive. But to each their own, maybe it's going to be a niche pick working here. They have the one game flexibility. Reminder, this is a best of three. It is a single elimination. No, the team that does lose at the end of the series will be going home. The other team to move on and face the winner of our next series coming up after this one. But let's go ahead and hop into the rosters at hand. And I also want to make a small side note because people are probably questioning. These games will be defaulted on the US East server. And the only way we will be changing that server is if both teams agree. If both teams do not agree, then it's US East all the way. So without oh, further yeah. ado, Zayori, I'm going to lead off your introductions on your Radiant side. We got Root Gaming, which was formerly Thundercats. Monkeys Forever is going to be your purple man. He's going to be playing your core Razor. DK on your mid lane Storm Spirit. Crit's going to be playing your Skywrath Mage support. And that leaves Stand-In Spirit or Fun, who's not the stand-in, going to be playing your Undying. Man, they have been hounding this top rune. They want to get an early first blood. Oh yeah, baby. Batrider down bottom looking to secure an 
easy bounty. Will he be able to get it? Yeah, it looks like Bog is not going to go for it. So, Dire Side, we've got Pain Gaming 4DR. We'll take the Juggernaut headed to the off lane for now. Mid, it'll be HFN, one of their newer players on the Shadow Fiend. Baga supporting on the Vengeful Spirit. That puts Tavo on the safe lane. Nyx Assassin joining King RD himself, riding the Raptor on the Disruptor. King RD on support. I have to say, that's something new. I know I haven't seen a lot of Pain Gaming as of recent, but back in the day, King RD was their mid slash, you know, core f player. So I haven't seen a lot of them play uh, on support. So we'll have to see. Or maybe he just happens to be their disruptor player. Who knows? But for now, interesting lane setup, putting the Nyx side by side with disruptor for now. He gets a little bit of zonage back on your Skywrath Mage, but that immediately props the static link. And Monkeys Forever is going to whip the Nyx right out from the lane and try to assert his dominance here for some early CS gains. Yeah, it's a 2-1-2 two -two coming from Pain Gaming. They'll keep the uh, Venge in the off lane to join the Jug. Secure farm there. Make sure Guanzo doesn't get too much space in lane, though. Already, he's finding a fast level 2. Was treated to the luxury of a level 1 sticky napalm. Now he grabs that Firefly. So not too bad for the safe lane. Bat Rider already puts a little pressure on Root to make something happen in this aggro try now. They've got the Undying up here, joined by the Skywrath. Some decent kill potential. We'll see what they can get done already. Those decay stacks coming out. Yeah, it's feeling like Pain could be uncomfortable with this lane setup. This aggro try could have caught them a bit off guard, and they can't feel too comfortable here with Undying kind of the back babysitter to Monkeys Forever who can bring in the Prime CS. And bottom lane, they're not going to be able to really stop Guanzo on his Bat Rider, and that's a scary thing. We already talked about how potent of a player he can be. If he finds the farm on his Bat Rider, he could be a real nuisance in the mid-game. Pain, better watch out for that one. But let's talk about mid lane here. DK 9-2 and two CS to Shadow Fiend 4-1. and one. He's off to a very strong start here. Yeah, you expect the Storm to win the lane early on against the Shadow Fiend before he has a lot of souls, and this is pretty solid domination. Keeping HFN down, not letting him get that early bottle, which I'm sure he, uh, sure he would like. Uh, Courier headed on back. He'll have enough gold for it pretty soon here. He will start to take over this lane, though. As the levels come out, Shadow Rays gets a little bit stronger, and he did grab that second point in Necromaster at level 3. I feel like more Shadow Fiends go for that Shadow Rays, and... Just put on the pressure a little bit early. But back in the top lane, there's a wraparound. They'll dive the tower for this. Monkeys Forever stealing a lot of damage off of King RD. Bands up on the Tavo, who's now out of options. He's just going to try to turn tail and run. There's your spike, Carapace. He gets healed up by stick charges. They're still in tower range. Spirit trying to get close to clobber him with those undying fists. He won't find it, but crit will. The first blood comes out. Monkeys Forever, one hit from death. But the tower won't aggro onto him. And King RD, no way to close the gap. Now he's stuck in the trees. Are they going to make it a twofer? Nope, doesn't seem like it. In the bottom lane, meanwhile, though, 4DR finds a kill on Guanzo. But they actually might not stop here top lane. The rotation does come back from Tavo, and that's enough for Undyne to pull back. So, yeah, simultaneous action happening from top to bottom, but a very long-winded fight, which is something Root Gaming were anticipating. They were hoping to kind of make the wraparound play and get their kill quick and get the hell out of there, but nice evasive maneuvers plus the, the stick certainly helped keep Nyx Assassin alive a bit longer, and with that, Monkeys Forever almost actually got brought down but definitely went on a bit too long. Maybe even distracted possibly on the bottom. The Batrider did end up being dropped, and now he's going to sidestep to the jungle and find his farm there. Okay, so things settled down a little bit. I didn't catch much of that kill in the bottom lane, but 4DR getting a pick off onto the Batrider. Of course, great news for his bottom line. And now Batrider relocated to the jungle for now. Just heads right in there, starts working on this uh, series of camps. He did get a good bit out of the lane, already level 4, 700 gold in the bank on brown boots. Probably looking for tranquils, tranquils uh, but we'll begin that quest towards the Blink Dagger before too long. Four minutes about to strike, which means the runes are going to pop up. We already have coverage on the bottom, Baga keeping an eye on it here now for his ally. Meanwhile, top lane DK is going to be the first on the scene. He's almost at level 6, about halfway there, so no early harassment, no early gank moving coming up pretty much from either team. They don't want to pressure the Storm Spirit when he could be at his weakest when he doesn't have the mobility factor of his level 6, but it looks like he'll be able to get it safe and sound. Meanwhile, not being too safe. Ba um, see Baga coming to harass here. This Bat Rider, Guanzo's going to take flight and just try to work with his own jungle. Baga, though, could come in and try to take some last hits. He will take some of that away, so Bat Rider getting a bit frustrated and flustered with this one. Okay, back in the top lane. Monkeys forever. Oh, thought he might go for the dive on the Tavo. Just steal some damage. Forces out a spike carapace, and that'll be the end of it. 
Looking at the general CS scores here, mid lane very even within one or two less hits of each other. Jug, the last hit leader in the off lane, that is giving Dyer a bit of an advantage. Jug way out farming the Razor relatively as they are the position ones here despite being in the off lanes. Oof. Oh. Jump on the mid, they get a hold of HFN with the rotation from Crit. They might be able to get him down, they can't. He goes into the trees, they turn back onto Crit and take him down instead. DK still persistent, bottling up, using the haste, but he can't quite find the Shadow Fiend. It looks like this gank not going to be happening right now. Root Gaming falls short and with the prompt rotation over. Great able to instead take down, yeah, Skywrath Mage hits the deck. Beautifully done. Fast fingers on the TP scroll and just underestimating the power of the Shadow Fiend when he has support coming on his way. So, yeah, 40R. Now as his phase boots up, still farming away in the bottom lane. This aggro try up top for Root Gaming has not gotten enough done. Um, Razor has found decent farm, but Nyx Assassin's still doing okay for himself. The quest for level 6 going rather well, soon to be 5. He's got an 11 CS already. They can find another kill on him right here, that would be great. But in a two on three, if you don't get these kills, it's not quite worth it. Tabo just playing a little ring around the Rosie. He's lost a lot of damage. And Monkeys Forever now hitting very hard. Finds the kill on King RD. But there's your Omni Slash to bring him down. It's a one for one as the Razor dives the tower, gets punished, and Jug comes out the victor. That is a bit disastrous right there for Root Gaming. These engagements not going the way they planned. And I think Undying not having a whole lot of mana to work with certainly uh, doesn't help. No Tombstone there. Can't really benefit too much and dish out some extra decays and they end up being taken down instead. Back-to-back -back gank attempts that kind of get blown up in their face. So now your score 2-3, to three. Pain Gaming off to a nice early advancement here as they get ready to approach the mid-game. Root Gaming got to look to bounce back. Batrider needs to get that Blink Dagger, start pulling in some kills there. Storm Spirit, well, he is level 6 now. Didn't really get a lot done in the mid lane the second he, le he hit level 6, but they definitely need to start developing into a serious mid-game if they want to pull this one back. Yeah, now what's scary here is that Pain have the farm lead and oh, hold that thought is up top. 4DR maybe in some trouble. Ancient Seal comes out, a lot of damage being stolen. Razor up to plus 150. They won't even need the auto attacks. He goes down to the plasma field, gets glimpsed back, but Jug already falls. So another kill for Root Gaming, just as I was about to say. They need to find something to slow down this Jug, and well, they do it right away, Dakota. Yeah, they got the memo, and they got it done. So while there's a lot of attention on the top lane, Guanzo's had a little bit of free space to work with for now. He's got his Tranquils and about 1,300 gold farmed up, but Tavo's made the rotation from top lane to bottom. Now level 6 has been dead to work with. We'll see how long he wants to wait before he rotates away from this lane. But as I say it and go look away, they make the stun happen onto Guanzo. The Batrider's going to be in trouble. Oh, can't quite find the last hit. There it is. Baga's going to get that one, and his blink is going to continue to get delayed little by little. Ooh, in the mid, DK going in on HFN. The Shadow Fiend in some trouble as the storm zipping around. TC, TP support's on the way. DK goes down before Baga can get there, though. He does find the experience for the kill. So a one-for-one -one trade, though. Advantage for the Storm Spirit. Also, space created for that top lane. Monkeys Forever will find the last hit on that Tier 1 tower. So Root Gaming, well, they get a little pick-me-up despite losing their Bat Rider in their safe lane. So Monkeys has been pretty persistent on just finding his way top lane. It's not very often you get to see really a powerhouse Razor as of recent. He's probably going to look to push the survivability a bit. And I'm curious to see if he goes right for the mech to lead things in. It's been a while, I know, since we've seen Razor as far as what the itemization might be. Or maybe he has something else in mind. But he's currently sitting at about 1,800 gold. I'm just very curious to see where he, where he wants to invest. Bottom lane. Lasso comes out onto 40R. Out comes Monkeys Forever as well. But TP support coming on in. Tabo in a lot of trouble and he will fall getting just a little too aggressive there guanzo locks him in place and root gaming have a huge reaction as it ends up being four heroes that come down for the knicks it looks like they're going to use this momentum to kind of get a push happening here bottom lane they got the full creep wave to work with plus three involved the glyph is going to come out very early here Guanzo went to step back to the jungle, make some stacks happen so he can finish his way towards his blink dagger but no rotations quite yet here's baga Looking to come in, but it's just one vengeful spirit for now. And I think Root Gaming are going to plant themselves here until they can at least finish out the tower. But as I say, that Tavo's going to make his return. Vendetta's going to be up. Let's see if he considers going for any sort of relative pick here. He's got Vendetta up right now. Monkeys is very close to the tower. There's the strike. There's the stun. Baga can follow it up with a magic missile. Will do so. And that's going to be a quick Razor takedown. Oh, and he puts the tombstone way too far forward. This is free money for Pain Gaming. Tavo says, thanks for the three figures of gold, my friend. 
I'll put it to good use, don't you worry. He's got his arcane boots up already, and that starts his quest towards his next item. Five to six, things level out a little bit here. Root Gaming was starting to pull ahead, but Pain Gaming strike right on back. It is Pain that have a pretty good experience edge as well here, Dakota. Over about 2,500 gold, looks or experience rather. It looks like they've been working their jungle just a little more effectively. And that's what counts. We're getting ready to get to 10 minutes in. This is where the mid games should start getting a bit more spicy. You got Bat Rider, who's going to be pretty close to his Blink Dagger. How's Storm Spirit looking here? He's going to go right for the Orchid as he already has the Sage's Mask at the ready here. He just wants to build up a little bit more. But I do have to feel like this Undying, as it stands right now for a hero that could potentially fall off in the near future, hasn't really been a huge factor as of yet. Maybe when they're able to kind of go for the objectives and get involved with big four or five man team fights, he'll really show his potential and the good congestion of a fight. But right now it's been a bit subtle. But here we go. Pain Gaming on the move. Tavo leading out the charge right now in Vendetta form. Could cross paths with said Undying. And well, he's oh going to go ahead and... Carl Lori, Walking oh. dead. See you later. Bat Rider on his way in though. Does he find a lasso on the way out? He grabs Baga, but there's a stun from the Spike Carapace. Now DK on his way in, grabs Baga. Beautiful stun on two from Tavo. He presses forward, wants the kill, but out comes the Mystic Flare, and they will get the bug. Tavo punished for moving in for that final kill. Now the Shadow Fiend, he is hasted up on his way into the fight, but doesn't really have too much to offer here. Will go back to safe territory. Requiem available, but doesn't go for it. Yeah, I'm curious if he could get in a decent position to maybe go with a double raise and a couple of auto attacks, but it just seemed a bit awkward, and his team was already on the way out, so... Better not to risk it for anything like that. So he goes back to his laning, kind of get up here for now. Meanwhile, bottom lane, King RD pushed himself forward. Obviously, he's been able to get his level 6 utilized there, especially at a period of the game when Storm Spirit's going to look to really go crazy. It's going to be nice to have that very defensive Static Storm to kind of rain on his parade. There's going to be probably an occasion or so where Storm Spirit could look to make the ball jump happen if it's not going to be on Disruptor himself and he doesn't have the vision. He could be welcomed with a bit of trouble. Well, Jugs found plenty of space in the top lane. He secured the kill on the top tier one tower. Fortunately for him, it was denied by the Undying, but gives him enough gold to get that Mask of Madness, and now he's going to work the jungle, cruising around, and I reckon a Yasha will be coming out in the near future, get him up towards that max movement speed, and he'll be cruising around like a madman. Ready for Roche in no time. Options opening up here for Pain Gaming as they start to get that core kit of items. Undying feeling very poor right now. He's quickly becoming the weak one to be picked on. Tavo scouting him out in the Radiant Jungle. Vendetta online. Can he close the gap? Uh-oh, the zombie's in a lot of trouble here, Dakota. Out comes the Thunderstrike. Another Static Storm. Oh, the hate is real for Spirits Undying. He goes down once more. Now in the mid lane, HFN. Well, was in trouble, but hey, that invisibility rune will keep him safe. And that guy's a rune lord right now. Gets the haste, follows it up with an invis that also comes into good use. And that was Batrider's Blink Lasso, or attempted Blink Lasso, his debut of the Blink. And for a Batrider player, that's always when you want to get that easy first kill. And unfortunately, he comes up short. They now have the intel that he does have the Blink. And, well, HFN has been scouting out here monkeys forever. Not going to look to move forward on that. It looks like instead he'll just get the idea that Root Gaming are making a rotation towards the bottom. But their Tier 1 tower is already going to be dropped right here. And Pain Gaming, they would probably look to follow it up with a takedown of the mid-Tier 1 tower, which... Shelfie is pressuring. He gets lassoed, pulled back right now into Monkeys forever. There's going to be a big link. TP is going to be broken from the Flame Break, and they're going to take him down with relative ease. Good grab right there. A bit of a greedy prey from your Shadow Fiend, but I can understand. Pain Gaming want to get that tower down, and that way they can make a move into the Roche Pit. Bottom lane, DK scouted out by Tavo. This Nyx Assassin is starting to do a lot of work. King RD nearby on the sideline. Does not have the Static Storm, but they'll go for it anyway. Do they have the damage to bring him down? Well, it doesn't look like it so far. Thunderstrike is there. Now the auto attacks come out. King RD gets turned around on Electric Vortex, but wand charges keep him alive. DK didn't keep that in his uh, in the back burner there, and oof, that's a big turnaround now. Another fight breaking out in the mid lane. Mid lane, they find another couple of kills right there. They're able to take yeah. down Undying once more. Plus, Omni. Monkey Forever going to be dropped right there, all thanks to the Omni Slash there from the Jug and. Yeah, DK man, he thinks he can hop in, quickly get the kill on the Disruptor support. Obviously wasn't baking on the magic stick being there. And when things got a little too hairy, he didn't even have time to swap out to his strength yeah. treads or even use his bottle. Things just got ugly pretty damn fast. A lot of kills being traded, but it is Pain that's gotten the better of it recently. Getting the biggest lead we've seen yet this game. About 3,500 gold, 4,200 experience. Yasha now up on Jug. It is the mech on the Shadow Fiend. 
double urn and a medallion they're itemizing pretty effectively here a lot of good value items for this stage of the game so i reckon pain will keep the aggression up guanzo's picked up his blink dagger on the bat rider and it looks like the razor will just go yasha into a uh, s and y yeah Oh, they're scouted out the Ancient Stack. They smoke to move forward. There's the jump. They can't quite get the lasso. He, they, they do get it on the 40 yard. Pull him back. He's trying to make this happen. He has no mana, no Omni Slash, no nothing. So they need that kill. They get it. Static Storm catches three, and the Kinetic Field locks him in place. But they're still on the hunt. They want King RD, but here comes Tavo in from behind, going out for Monkeys Forever. Gets the stun, the Vendetta. Nice stun return with the Carapace. Monkeys ends up going down. Back and behind. The rest of the Root Gaming squad are going to look to head the way out. But Crit, uh oh. He is stuck. Please don't see me here. Please don't see me here. He is going to hold on. He has no TP, and they don't know he's there. So Can now, how do I get him? the hell out of here <laughs> without getting scouted and killed? This is a rocky situation to be in because there's a ward right here on the low ground he may or may not be uh, wary of. He's at least bought his item, so if he dies, it's not the end of the world. Could maybe try suicide oh, into the ancients. Oh, the clips! The clips! He's gonna see him and clips him back! Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, crit! He's gotta go the other way! Kinetic field! Oh. Get out of there, buddy! Oh, he wants to take it to King RD with a Mystic Flare! He'll get him in return! Whoa. What a player! Already ends a killing spree. Very nicely done. Of all the heroes to square up against, that's a pretty good choice. Now, Jug did buy back in that fight to make that happen. Smart play from 4DR. They do end up taking it. And meanwhile, with the Radiant Tier 1, another fight's gonna break out. Tavo scouting it out in the front lines, but now the Shadow Fiend on the run. Lasso not up for another 10 seconds. Do they actually end up taking this fight? They're gonna have to. Shadow Fiend doesn't have an ultimate here. Uses the mech doing what little damage he can, but it's been stolen by Monkeys. A one for one Bat Rider for Shadow Fiend, but now they trade Razor for Nyx Assassin. 40 yard in the mix. Already found that first kill with the Omni Slash. Now trying to make his escape with the Blade Fury. Looks like he will. Two for two in Ooh. that exchange. Fairly even. Very close stuff. Now a regen gets to be picked up from DK. A rune he's going to love to have. As he'll go back and farm it on up. Fortune was just a little late to get in on the engagement, but does end up making things a little more even. Both teams share. Pretty much even trade as far as golden XP and kills. So back to square when we go for both sides. Batrider looking to come back. You can just feel that Root Gaming are looking to turn up the tempo here. Maybe not feeling as comfortable in the late game going against this Jug and Shadow Fiend. They want to get a lot done at this point. Use their pushing power of their Razor to slowly bring down those Tier 2s and objectives. Keep the pressure on to pain so they don't feel comfortable even going for the Roche and maybe even consider taking it for themselves. That stack, man. Yeah, one thing Paint Gaming has been doing a lot better than Root is utilizing the Ancients here. And sharing is caring. As first it was Jug working on it, now it's Shadow Fiend with some Shadow Raises on the weak ones. Shadow Fiend's farm still pretty damn good. Him and Jug, top two on the net worth in the top lane, though. We'll see a fight on to 4DR. And, well, not even much of a fight, just a slaughter as they lock him in place with the lasso and bring out that Mystic Flare. It's a classic combo right there. You hold him in place, I'll blast the hell out of him with a Mystic Flare. Not much more about it. Jug, you know, could have been even possibly caught with a Mask of Madness on. Probably not. It was on, not on cooldown at that point. But he's still pretty frail of a hero at this point in the game. You know, with Phase Boots, Yasha, there's not a lot of meat on the bones. Shouldn't take much effort to bring down if you get the uh, potential lock in the place. Now they want to follow it up with a good objective. They get their tier 1 in the mid lane. And with that, they start creating a bit of extra space. Still got a tier 1 on the bottom to go for next if they want to kind of keep this party going. But for now, Pain Gaming just kind of pull out their defenses and go back to casual farm. Yeah. So, Jug's next item, we'll see. 1,500 gold up on him, Razor. SNY completed, and now probably the BKB with this Ogre Club. I think he'll want to get an Aghanim Scepter at some point this game. What worries me for Root Gaming, though, is they're not taking objectives that aggressively here, Dakota. They've only knocked down two Tier 1 towers, and we're only 18 minutes in, but... Mm -hmm. Pain have the obvious late game advantage and still their two big scary late game cores are topping the net worth chart and as long as this stays relatively even as the slugfest that it is, Pain will eventually start to overtake them. I certainly agree with that. Man, Disruptor has been actually bringing in some good farm. Score of 3-2-3. Three, three. He's level 11. He's got the wow. level 2 Static Storm to work with and, and he he's got a Yules. Of all items. Yeah, you don't see that on Disruptor too often. It's still almost always that Ag Rush that comes out most popularly. Interesting choice to see how he'll utilize this. I guess it does set up for easy static storms. Yeah. I think that's pretty Kinetic much the main fields, thing right what there. what have you. Yeah. It's good against Batrider. Batrider gets a jump and lasts onto someone else. You just quickly pop the Yules onto him. Mm -hmm. It's good defensive and it's good offensive for a yeah, hero like Disruptor true. on good setup. So, And the move speed certainly doesn't hurt. I guess it's good for Storm as well since there's a cast point on the static storm. If you can catch him real quick with the Yules, mm -hmm. it does lock him in place for the rest of your team to catch up. So, 
Yeah, maybe more of a game-specific choice uh, than anything else, but we'll see how it works out for him. Tavo now level 11. Vendetta has that much more uptime. They'll smoke up on the back of the Knicks, and they'll have him to lead the charge. Here they go. Running to the other side. Probably going to scout out, clear out the Roche area, and finally make their first hurrah with the big boy. Trying to get that extra life so they can follow it up with their own Tier 2 takedowns and get a bit more gold off that map. So they look, they move into the pit, and it's time to get going here. We'll see. Root Gaming are nearby. Bat is already taken to the skies right here. One of the best at countering Roche, but he gets stunned Bravo. immediately from the Knicks counter, and he goes down. Wow. Immediately Carapace over the Firewalk. There's nothing he can do about it. Now Monkeys Forever with no more mana. Goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Baga. Meanwhile, on the bottom, HFN unleashes the Requiem and deers out the damage, but it's not going to be enough. Now they go toe-to-toe. 40 -to -toe. Is going to have to evacuate and they get the hell out. It ends up being a two for one trade. Advantage for Root as they take down both supports, but it doesn't stop there. Monkeys moves up into the lane and with yeah. his ultimate pop just kind of bullies them back and away. Makes Pain think twice about going into that Roche pit. I think they'll try to finish off this tier one tower before they retreat. Ended up going very well for Root. Seemed like the perfect way for Pain to start off that fight, bringing down the Bat Rider. But the big problem is it took the Omni Slash, and they need that for the middle of the fight to really zone out the supports and do the big damage. Also, the Disruptor got picked off on the side before he could get off his ultimate. And again, they need that Static Storm for the lockdown against the Storm Spirit and also just for the damage. So it looks like Root having a minor ping issue here. Hopefully their pause isn't too long. They'll have a maximum of 10 minutes if uh, if need be here, if they need to reset or what have you. The timer already ticking. Yeah, we, we've got the rule book. We're not too worried about that. It's just, All right, just I looks like the it'll ping. be just a quick Everyone's one just a little bit of a hiccup, a little bit of a spike, and then we'll get back underway. So right. we're, we're good to go. No big deal there. So, but yeah, I agree. They're going to keep their push happening here. Want to take away this tier one tower. So if they maybe themselves want to consider a rush in their future, Pain Gaming won't have access to get a close rotation. But Tavo's already on the scene here in Vendetta. Wants to see if he can get a quick pick. Tombstone going to be dropped on the side. And Tavo's still inching forward now, here. There is a glyph yeah. here. An easy tombstone takedown. That's unfortunate right there for Root Gaming. Oh. Now DK going to get caught right under the static storm, the kinetic field, the whole kit and caboodle. And he is going to hit the deck. Monkeys forever. Glyph's back next. Beautiful two-man drop. Pain, not giving anything easy to Root Gaming. Yeah, the only misplay there was not glyphing the tower. They had it available. Storm got in and snuck, or pardon me, Razor got in, snuck in that last hit before the fight really started. So not all bad, but certainly not good for Root, conceding a two for nil on two of their cores. Now this opens up Roshan for Pain. Easy peasy. Nothing they can do about it. Look at the armor go down. That Rider, he snatches oh, the Aegis. Oh, boy. Uh, Guanzo. My man jumps in, gets it taken away. He might go down twice, but it's so worth it in his book. Or will he live? The oh, glimpse back, glimpse the ancient. Back. See you later. Oh, but okay. hey, that's great. Yeah. That is great. Now, is it worth it? Some players will argue both ways, depending on the situation. I would call it kind of a break even. You have to throw away your life, but you prevent the Aegis from going into the hands of the opposition at this I stage think of the game. that's huge. A good trade, I think. I mean, now they can't control the momentum like we see a lot of teams do. They can't just bait out their one carrier in the front. And no, oh, they'll just blow everything on his first life. That's not the case anymore. And they lose out. Man, I I didn't even see him coming into there. That's just, that's literally the definition of a bat out of hell. <laughs> to get in there and get that Aegis. <laughs> yeah. So, Payne still get the kill on Roche, which helps out their bottom line. About 3k net worth in their favor. The experience graph is really what's getting out of control. About 7,500. DK in the mid lane. There's another Static Storm after the Nyx Assassin initiation. But they don't have the damage to finish him off. Glimpse back onto crit to make sure that Skyrat doesn't come on in. Payne looking for a fast grab there. Won't be able to find it. Not really looking to commit for a full engagement. And King RD plays a serious disruptor. I was curious how he was going to play as a support at the start of this game, but he definitely knows how to get the yeah. setups He's there. He's been very aggressive. He He's yeah. playing a support, but it feels like more of a core disruptor to some degrees. He's, he's yeah. pretty bold running in there setting up these kills. It feels like most often teams play him in that five position, very selfless support. Just get the wards, get your way, and maybe if you're lucky you can get a four staff or something, but... King RD is definitely taking the reins of the more greedier support this game and having, you know, Vengeful Spirit just get her medallion and they get the wards otherwise. And it's been paying off. He's got quick levels. He got his Stag Storm leveled up quickly. He now has a, you know, pretty nice item in the Yule Scepter. Maybe one day he puts together an Agnums and holy moly, things get a bit exciting. Yeah, so Payne just go right back to farming. Jug now has a completed Manta, another 2100 gold sitting in the bank. Feeling pretty rich here. The Shadow Fiend, he's gone for the BKB. Still that 10 second charge, hasn't actually used it yet. And another 1800 on top of that. How's Monkeys Forever doing? BKB coming out soon, Dakota. About 300 off as he farms some mud golems here in the jungle. 
Things starting to come together a little bit for Root Gaming. You've got a Bloodstone now on your Storm Spirit, and he's got the Ogre Club. BKB, I think a necessity this game, though the problem is Next Assassin is going to be that Initiator, and BKB, not really a great counter to him. You can't really predict when his stuns are going to come out to preemptively BKB it. So it has to come in tandem with a gem, something that Root Gaming have actually picked up. It is on Guanzo the Batrider, though it is a little bit risky, of course. Root Gaming inch themselves forward down this mid lane. They have so much initiation on their sides. Guanzo goes to the skies now. Could cross pass with Baga. Gets Baga. Kidnaps Baga. Pulls him back towards the Mystic Flare. And that's a lot of hate on his support. But there's going to be the Static Storm dropped on the DK. He's got to try to get the hell out of here. Silence there promptly after. Omni Slash flies. He's able to ball to safety and bottle on up. Not so good for fun. Fun is going to be taken down. That's no fun. <laughs> Spirit will be taken care of as you're... Zombie Man will glimpse. drop, but the glimpse back. Beautifully done right there again. <laughs> King RD gets the setup. It's Steve Nash of his team right oh, now. Oh, man. Did you see that plasma field on your screen as weird as it looked on mine when he got glimpsed back and it got all crinkled? No, I don't think I think it looked pretty normal. You just normal looked normal? Okay, mine looked like a, a crinkled mess. Yeah, it looked like an inverted circle. It was kind of weird. Anyway, big fight for pain. They traded support for a core and the undying. Very nicely done. Now Jug looking at probably a Scotty coming up next. Picks up an ultimate orb, and they move right into this tier 2 tower mid. There is a glyph for the Radiant side, but they may just let this fall. If they glyph it here, Pain may be tempted to have a go at the high ground and abuse this 20 additional seconds without the Razor, but nope, they back on up and save it for another day. Shadow Fiend nearly, uh, nearing 4,000 gold. Very curious where he's going next. Tavo now has his Blink Dagger on the Nyx. All right, positioning now in the favor for Pain. And he goes right into Vendetta. They want to sweep, and they're playing this as if they did have the Aegis, where they just go and start taking down Tier 2 Towers. Feeling pretty comfortable with their team fight as it is right now. 40R. 30 more seconds before his Omni Slash will be at the ready, but they have plenty of help nearby. King RD is going to be waiting in the wings with Glimpse at hand just in case. The pesky Bat Rider wants to kind of get in. Plus, he has the Yules. He even has a, another Staff of Wizardry here. Could be a Force Staff. Could be the early makings of a Agnum Scepter. We'll have to see where he wants to go with this Disruptor. All right, Root Gaming grouped up as four in the bottom lane, perhaps thinking about defending this tier two if uh, Pain were to push, but looks like they'll just back up and go back to farming themselves. Shadow Fiend now committing to what seems to be a butterfly. Eagle Song picked up. Doubt it'll be the E Blade in a game such as this. As Disruptor, he picks up another staff of wizardry. I guess it'll just be a force staff. The way King RD is farming, I feel like uh, an Agonim's, even with the Yules, is not out of the realm of possibilities. I really like the butterfly grab here on HFN. Monkey's Forever, I don't imagine him getting a Monkey King bar anytime soon. It and would be so fitting, though. Anyone else on his team is not really going to get a Monkey King bar anytime soon. He's their only real right clicker. Yeah, seems and like a really... And it also mitigates a lot of damage from the storm. Even though he does a lot of magical damage, a fair bit of it does come from those auto attacks. He's going to have a hard time hitting the Shadow Fiend with that evasion, so we'll have to see what the game plan is here. But like we were anticipating, Root Gaming, it's... We got to get this job done pretty fast. We can't afford Pain Gaming to be a problem later, but it's getting later. As time goes on, we're going to get to the 30-minute mark of this, and I can only imagine things begin to blossom better and better for Pain Gaming from oh, here yeah. on out. Even just Scotty and Butterfly, once they're completed across the two cores, will make yeah. this a lot more difficult for Root. Pain will smoke up now as five. They'll move through the mid lane and right into enemy territory. Root do not have any vision. They should be a bit skeptical here. Shadow Fiend throws some raises from the high ground. Although that may reveal things just a little bit. Beautiful positioning from Spirit right onto the high ground. Reveals the smoke and keeps his team safe. Pain reposition themselves. They go back and behind and just kind of make do with their Ancients for now. We still got a couple of minutes before Roche and his proper timer even pops up here. Just looked like Pain Gaming wanted to get something aggressive happening here. and. Well, they don't find anything, but they continue to stall the game out, which is fine with them. Root Gaming now step back, and we look over some of their items here, and I'm not seeing a smoke. I'm not seeing any way to kind of go aggressive and try to bring this yeah. game back. It's just feeling like they're going to be playing it a bit passive here on out, and I don't want to say it's feeling like they want to just kind of roll over and take it, but as the time goes on, I just feel like their comeback potential is not going to be as strong. Absolutely. Storm closing in on his BKB. Maybe that's what they're waiting for before they really turn up the notch and try to get some kills going but they need to reclaim some momentum here their timer is quickly coming to an end that window to do crippling damage starting to close 
There's a full butterfly. That's half the window Oof. down. Guanzo no. blinks in. Can't find the lasso, but he does get glimpsed back. Oh, it's a miscommunication. The static storm and kinetic field come out. King RD miscommunicating with himself right there. <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunate. I, that felt a bit awkward. He was like, I'm going to glimpse him back, but then I'm also going to drop well, my static storm and kinetic field in hopes that that stops the glimpse. It's because somehow. the Nyx stunned him. So he's thinking, oh, he's stunned. Quick, this is a great time for the ulti, but it's like, oh, crap. I already glimpsed him. Damn it. Well, yeah, not going to be stopping that from happening. Only a misplay from the Raptor, but not the end of the world. They are down a pretty big ultimate in the eyes of Root Gaming, though, and they only had to really sacrifice a brief blink in from Bat Riders. So, oh, and the Tombstone also went down. So he's got about 25 Dyer's seconds, though. Down. Whereas your Tag Storm has still has 40 seconds. They smoke up. They're like, let's go right now. Let's go. They're they're kind of down a couple of spells. This might be our chance to really get something popping. Okay, let's see if they can do it. How long is it till the Disruptor ult? Only 30 seconds. Pretty short cooldown, but still, Lasso comes out onto 40 arc. Can they bring him down fast enough, though? He does have the Scotty. He's damn tanky. Out comes the Mystic Flare. He can't get off the Omni Hill. Oh, the bench goes down. Now the Jug goes down as well. It's a fast two for nil. BKB's on a plenty. Shadow Fiend uses his channels the Requiem, but it's Pain Gaming getting cleaned up here. He gets a pick on the oh. support on dying. Now DK goes down as well. HFN, he's cleaning it up. He's huge. It's Shadow Fiend doing all the damage here. He's the lone survivor. He only gets a double kill, but oh man, with three dead. It's a four for three. Not as bad for Pain as it first seemed it would be. It took so much sweat to bring down that Juggernaut. He was still able to get off the Omni Slash there at the end, and that just cost him a lot. They still got to mitigate a lot of the damage coming together, but it was enough. And had they been able to bring down the Jug before the Omni Slash, things could have been dramatically different. But because they ate a lot of that damage, it allowed HFN to come in and clean house. Monkeys Forever did also find a couple of kills himself, bringing down a couple of the supports. But things just came so close, yet so far. There was even a brief moment DK was about to take down the Disruptor, but because of, again, the magic stick, he was able to get a just enough life to survive, and they ended up turning it back around on the Storm Spirit's head. So, very awkward frantic kind of engagement right there from both sides but pain gaming do get the better of it and hfn is just the mvp on that front and with yeah. that he's got about 2500 gold after his mech bkb build up and butterfly he can really build up some damage here if he wants to yeah he was already pretty massive before that fight and now it's just getting even worse the gap between him and the leading farmer on route continuing to grow for dk yeah the bkb helps but it doesn't give you that much more killing power as we saw in that fight as soon as he runs dry on mana he is pretty much food and certainly can't stand up against the likes of the Shadow Fiend. The idea from Root, pretty much ignore him, kill all of his friends, then it becomes a little bit easier to deal with, but seemed like not easy enough. Now in the Roche Pit, a little tuffle will break out, glimpse back onto the Bat Rider. Roche is up though, and both yep. teams will start to posture around to not hand him over to the other side. Pain should have the advantage here though, I think. This is where things get a bit tense from both sides. Immediate D Ward raises a flag for Root. They know that Pain are going for this, but they got more damage than they did before. Can Guanzo do what he did once already? This time Tavo. they have an idea. Tavo's gonna be the bodyguard for the Crypt and not gonna allow it to happen. It gets taken down. He still tries to force forward, but can't grab it this time. Age is gonna be snagged from your Shadow Fiend, and now Pain Gaming are gonna be the janitors as they try to clean house. Or will they though? They lose two. Monkeys goes down. Now D DK on the run back, and Pain Gaming with both cores thriving, move forward and begin to chop. Silence, Manted off immediately, going to the low ground, DK. Oh. On ball raise, connects, DK so slow. Oh my god, trying to run away, can't get away, gets slashed in the back and taken down. Now Pain Gaming, parade down the mid lane, Mask of Madness popped, get the hell back here, says 40R, wants to catch up with crit, spinning forward, can't quite get there, but still, the push is already here, so why don't we? Well, we'll just keep pushing. Now they're yeah. going to add some pressure to the high ground of Root Gaming. This is trouble. It's a two for two, but Pain Gaming get the cores down. They also keep their Aegis in tow, still on the Shadow Fiend and the last hit on Roche. So much more going their way after that fight. It does kind of stagnate the graph, but unless they want to use buybacks here, this tier three tower takes a lot of damage. Guanzo comes flying out. There's the lasso. Oh. But can they turn this around? Mystic Flare's there. Now the Manta. Guanzo gets dropped. That's a gem on the deck. Spirit runs in. He'll pick it up on the Undying. And it ends up just being a one for nil. Pain getting the advantage. They will back off. Root keep their barracks alive, but huge damage on that tier three tower. That is not the last thing you want to be going for. A blink and force just to get a hold of them is not going to leave much to bring him back towards your team. And by that point, it's just he's so beefy that a simple Skywrath ultimate's not going to do it. Not anymore. It did once already, but now with Scotty in hand, he is just a Mid big guy. Mid lane, they make the jump on the monkeys forever, leading with the stun. Now the chops come flying through. Manta going to be popped thereafter, plus Mask of Madness 
forces out the BKB. Monkeys Forever tries to steal the damage on the way back and will be able to live. Gets the little bit of extra heal right there from the Undying, but it does force out his BKB. It doesn't cost a whole lot from Pain Gaming. They just keep bullying back Root Gaming at this point. Yeah, that takes his BKB now down to seven seconds and, well, just that much less effective. Jug, 2100 gold, still feeling pretty strong. A full Assault Karas now on HFN Shadow Fiend. Aegis with more than enough time left on it. About three minutes here as they move towards the high ground. Tier 3 tower under heavy assault. There's no glyph this time. They will bring the tower down very quickly. Ancient Seal out on HFN. Flame Break brings him pretty low. Now the zip in from Storm. This may be the end of the Aegis. Lasso out on 40R. No Omni Slash quite yet, but he'll live through the Onslaught. Ultimate available with the Shadow Fiend coming back up. They may need to take this fight. There's your ultimate from King RD. HFN channels the Requiem BK Beyond. And they'll start to clean this up. Storm Spirit goes down next. Now Spirit in some trouble. One more auto attack from HFN. The raise not quite there. It will just be a kill on the storm, but now the barracks. Fair game, Dakota. There they go. Exposed. Look at the right click come. HFN easily going to be able to clean house there. Do they stay and commit for the two or do they go? It looks like they're second guessing themselves and they will stay. With that, they'll be able to easily clean out the second racks. Or will they? 40 yard in trouble. Silence up slow. The Atos bringing him to a near a halt. Oh, the flame break going to catch him on the ass on the way out, but Pain Gaming, they're, they, they're frantic. They like, got to finish what we started, guys. They get back in there. They get it done. Now they get the hell back. They walk away with a bit of an extra swagger behind them because it's 28 to 23. Their net worth now goes down or up in their favor past the 10K mark. <laughs> and, well, with that, they could just clear out the other lanes tier two and just keep their advantage. And, well, for Root Gaming... Yeah. Plan B, Plan C, where do we go from here? Yeah, Root Gaming's options quickly coming to an end here. That fight was fairly well handled. They only had one death come out, but at this point, the carries are just taking over. Shadow Fiend's net worth 50% up on the storm. The gap continuing to grow. His item progression really slowing down. You'll see an ultimate orb in the inventory now. Then you look over at Shadow Fiend and Jug. He just picked up an Assault Karas, another 2700 gold, 4DR. He's got a Skull Basher, and that last fight, he didn't even use Omni Slash. He got zoned out at the beginning, was trying to save it for that perfect moment, and they were still able to take the barracks. Oh man, just goes to show how strong Pain Gaming are at this point. Root Gaming, it's going to take a hell of a lot to get this one back. Thankfully for them though, it is a best of three. And they can look to shake this one off and come back in game number two if it does come down to that. And I definitely would reconsider maybe some of the drafting they've thrown together. Unfortunately, Undying, it's at that fall off kind of a point. And you really don't know what he can bring to the table at this point in the game as far as defense, as far as offense. It just feels like a bit of a fickle point for the boy. A <laughs> fickle point indeed, my friend. <laughs> Razor now with his Anakin Scepter completed. They're ready to push, but it's maybe 10 minutes too late to really start the pushing to happen. They've got to stay turtle up, defend their high ground. They've got one outer tower remaining, and I reckon Payne will group up and take her down before too long. There's that big Aghanim Scepter we talked about a while ago. King RD on the Raptor. He's level 15, still farming like a madman. He's even with the enemy's Bat Rider. 2k gold up on the Nyx Assassin. He has effectively become the three in this match. Very impressive. Kind of like an EGM-ish support style here. It's so good. Such a good ultimate with Agnum Scepter. One of the best, at least in my book. It's an AoE freaking doom, for God's sakes. It's just nothing you could do about it. No item, no nothing. Monkeys forever. I like your BKB. It's cute and all, but once you're under my dark cloud, you ain't doing nothing. Mm -hmm. So, with that, Pain Gaming just adds so much more to their arsenal as they probably go for a final blow on either the top or bottom lane. It looks like bottom might be the choice after stalling out for potentially a rush. We'll have to see. Root Gaming, though, more eyes on them as far as where do we go from here. Bottom seems to be the choice, but they don't have any sort of strong setup. If they do make an advancement forward, I feel like Pain Gaming just have better crowd control at this point in the game. Yeah, definitely. This Nyx Assassin is such a long range on his initiations now with the four staff at home, but Guanzo goes blinking in. There's a lasso, but it gets broken right away. BKB's popped on both sides, but Monkeys Forever goes down to the Omni Slash. Now it flies into the rest of Rude Gaming. Crit taking the brunt of the assault Damn. from 4DR. The Requiem gets channeled around the backside, and Root Gaming dropping like flies. They haven't got nothing on the mutton of Pain Gaming. That'll be a tap out. Game one goes to the Dire. And it's really hard to say if they were just outplayed in this game. I have to say that the, uh, the draft was definitely a bit of the factor. It was ambitious. Went with the Razor, something we don't see all the time. They went with the aggro tri-lane. 
with that razor and an undying. Yeah. Trying something new. It's it's your first game, so you have a bit of wiggle room to pull out something like that. But I think they might need to just consider going with what works. Yeah, I mean, this game's a great example of why you don't see Undying or Razor that commonly uh, in our current meta game. Not that either of these players played particularly poorly, but when did Monkeys Forever really have an option to do much more? He stole a lot of damage, he was involved in those team fights. He ended that game 6, 10, and 11, so he was very active, but Razor just takes a little too much to come online before he really gets scary these days. Yeah, but. and then you're hoping you're just going for objectives. You're hoping you're breaking down tier twos by that 30 minute point so that way yeah. their late game has nowhere to farm, nowhere to branch out. But they had all the wiggle room they could ask for. They were starting to take yeah. Roche. They were starting to get all the items they could need. And by that point, Root Gaming had their lineup has expired. It was also well played by Payne. Their draft made a lot of sense, a lot of Roshan mm -hmm. control, and they had two obvious carries, and then their Nyx Assassin and supports made so much space. Vengeance yeah. Disruptor have huge peel potential if their support if their carries get jumped on, plenty of ways to disengage and reset that. And fight. if Guanzo's their star player and he picks something like a Bat Rider, they had so much good counter against it. The Nyx Assassin with his carapace, they already had Vengeful Spirit for the swap, yeah. Disruptor with the Yules. <laughs> Guanzo wasn't gonna get anything done. It was a yeah. hard game to be a Bat Rider by that point, but that's what happens. You get a Bat Rider early in the draft and a Vengeful Spirit it's still there. You're picking it into a ventral spirit. It's just that's where you got to take the extra couple of you know moments Absolutely. to really analyze where it's going. But that's just game number one. We got another game to go. It's match point for Pain Gaming. They win this one. They move on to the next round to face the winner of our next series. But we got to see if we're going to be taking it to a game number three, and if. I already forgot their name. Root Gaming, or a.k.a. Thundercats, <laughs> if they'll be able to bounce back in game number two. I'm Connell Guy. That's Ziori. We're Beyond the Summit. We'll be back in just a few moments with more Dota action.